Now we come to a really interesting piece. ABC Four Corners devoting an enormous amount of time and I might say some great insights into running a car at Bathurst and looking at the three major manufacturers, Ford, Holden and Chrysler, who were in it at the time. For Chrysler, a young engineer called John Ellis was brought in up against two hard heads, two really experienced guys. Al Turner from Ford, Mr. Smooth. When you see him and listen to him and some of his answers to questions and so on, he's fantastic. And there's the cunning guy, Harry Firth. Harry Firth, like Sir Jack Brabham, learnt to shut up and to say a minimal amount and to let you make up half the story. But in this piece, which is really special, we actually get into Harry Firth's workshop in Melbourne. It's almost never been done. And it was a crazy, curious, clogged up, tidy place. And out of there came an enormous number of Holden victories. And as Harry says, mumbling, barely, barely opening his lips, he says, no, I, I don't work for Holden. No, I get the money from the dealer council. We all know it was an underhand effort by Holden and it's alluded to by Al Turner. So it's a lot of fun, it's a great insight. Here, Four Corners, looking at what you have to do to win at Bathurst, all the planning that's involved. Prize money may run to around $20,000, but what is the Bathurst 500 really worth? <laughs> This weekend is a big one for car fans. At Bathurst this Sunday, 61 cars will compete in the Hardy Ferodo 500. And this race is the Prestige Series production car event, which means it's the top event for ordinary cars. Cars straight from the showroom floor, or at least straight from the showroom floor via the engineering workshop. But the point is that they are not modified cars, although there is no doubt they are prepared to a pitch not required in Martin Place or Collins Street. The prize money runs somewhere around the $20,000 mark, although there is little doubt that uh, money put into it by competitors would run closer to a million dollars. The real prize is approval within the public eye, and this makes for fascinating competition, particularly among the big three of Australia's car manufacturing world, Ford, GMH and Chrysler. For a peep into the power game, this report by John Sexton. All roads lead to Bathurst this time of the year in the car industry. It's the annual showcase of what production cars can do on a racetrack with special preparation. It's big billing as a spectacle and bigger business for the auto industry. Big three from Detroit, Ford, Chrysler and General Motors have 39 cars in the field of 61. Ford and Chrysler are running works teams. General Motors have a world policy of not taking part in motor racing, so Holden dealers run their own team. Managed by Harry Firth, a legend in the car game. His opponents call him the Fox. To his team, he's the doctor, with a surgical skill in extracting the last ounce of performance from engine, car and drivers. He's running four Taranas, developing an estimated 160 brake horsepower and reaching about 125 miles an hour. Chrysler's challenge is managed by John Ellis, a young engineer, three years out of university. He got the key job five weeks ago. He has four Valiant Pacers. Two of the new model, announced just as entries closed, with the estimated 245 brake horsepower driving them at around 125 miles an hour. Ford Special Vehicles Manager Al Turner came from Ford, Detroit. Last year, he narrowly lost the outright prize to one of Firth's cars. This year, Ford Works Team is again favoured for prestige outright honours. The most powerful car in the race, the GTHO Falcon, with an undisclosed output of between three and 400 brake horsepower. Competition among the big three cars has intensified as recent races show up strengths and weaknesses. Motoring writers have noted brake and head gasket troubles in the big Ford and tyre problems in paces. Each team keeps a knowing eye on the others. Experienced competition drivers don't miss a beat of the opposition's engines on the practice track. The big three teams have contracted top drivers for the punishing 500-mile endurance race. Several plan to drive single-handed, as the new regulations permit, but most have nominated co-drivers. Works drivers follow detailed instructions that read like a battle plan as they put in final runs before the 100-mile Oran Park race. 
down. Uh, get it relocated. <laughs> The two-minute horn on race day clears the grid. This could be a start, I'd say. We could be just about ready to get underway this time. Yes, the flag is up and it looks like we're going to get a start this time. At Oran Park, Chrysler were running all stops out for a spectacular win. Champion sprint driver Leo Gagan led in a pacer, hotly pressed by one of Harry Firth's Tiranas. These engines burn up dollar notes as greedily as petrol. By the time the starters roll onto the Bathurst grid, the private entrants will have spent up to $5,000 in preparation. The big three spend undisclosed amounts. The Ford Works team hadn't entered this race as their cars were being stripped down in Melbourne. It may have been shrewd tactics by Al Turner, as the tight sprint circuits didn't suit the big cars. Privately entered Fords couldn't stretch out the thundering horses that will rocket them along the Bathurst Straits. Chrysler pits were confident as the race unfolded. The smaller Tirana couldn't pass Leo Gagan, but was driving him slightly harder each time round. On the 72nd lap, the Gagan pacer lost a wheel and slammed off the track, allowing the Tirana to take the lead. The Chrysler pits were stunned by the accident. It looked a serious setback to their Bathurst challenge. The pressure was off Harry Firth's cars. The tactics were to just sit behind him and worry him all the time, and eventually when he ran wide, just go through him, which we did. It took a fair while, and the, the tactics of their team, as you saw, sort of slow, lost us a lot of ground a couple of times. That was fairly a bit beyond the realms of normal borging, you know. What does this tell you for Bathurst? Oh, well, we're definitely competitive for Bathurst. We know this already. Uh, but the big V8s are much stronger. This is, a, this is a short circuit, that's a long one, and they're much stronger. But the same tactics will apply, you know, you'll just worry them all the time. Is they make it or they don't. Bob Morris is going to take it out. Bob Morris for Alan Mason Holden in the Tirana XU1. Oh, Bathurst is the ultimate. Like, this is all a build-up. You see, we started at Warwick Farm, which we won. We went to Sandown, which we came second. We're now we've won here. And it's a case of proving your car and trying to psycho the opposition and finding out all the faults in their cars while they're looking for the faults in yours. And, you know, proving the car out because we haven't touched this particular car. We just run it at the three meetings without laying a spanner on it hardly. And uh, we now know that it will more than go the 500 miles. And this is something which, you know, does tell a fair bit. You say psycho the opposition. What sort of things do you do? Oh, well, we try and pressurise them a little bit. If you notice the, uh, uh, the second blue car balking ours today, like he, what, they'd come up and one would let them go past and the other one would pull in front of ours and stop in front of him. Well, this holds him back, you know, and. Uh, this is, a, this is all pretty fair tactics, although uh, we don't like to see too much of it. There are rumours that you use a few tricks yourself. You, you put well, up dummy yeah. lap times and give dummy signals. Oh, ah, we do, you know, give signals which confuse everyone else. We've got our own particular brand of signals. Uh, I suppose they're known mostly to me and the blokes, what I tell him. Even the mechanics don't know half the time. What do you think will be the big decider? Perhaps brakes on the big, uh, the big Fords? Well, the, the other people uh, have got their problems, like the Chrysler threw a wheel off today and broke the centre out of it, and uh, there was one old Ford and one new Ford that blew themselves asunder, uh, whereas ours are just whistling round and round, and we're pretty happy about this, and we think that we can just sit there and nibble away at them all day, and uh, what result comes out in the end, well, we'll see. Uh, well, the wheel centre broke, which uh, caused Leo to stop, unfortunately. Do you know what made it uh, break? No, at this stage we don't. We'll have to conduct metallurgical analysis on the material of the wheel to find out what is the trouble. We haven't broken a wheel before in any race, and we've com completed many that are a lot longer than this one.
Did you flinch when you knew that all the television cameras were on that car as it broke its wheel? Well, that, that was less of a worry than the fact that the wheel had broken to the car. As an engineer, I don't like to see parts for which I'm responsible fail. What sort of doubts has this cast in your own mind about the other wheels, perhaps? Uh, from a technical point of view, it means we'll go back to the wheel folk and say we need a better wheel. This is where motor racing does something for us. Uh, of course, the extremes of, of load that we were putting on the car today were far and above anything that the normal motors would do. These are some of the things that we learn uh, through motor racing. Will you have time to correct it before Bathurst, which is the big one? I'm sure so. Uh, for instance, at Bathurst, we wouldn't dri be driving the car quite as hard as we were here in a 100-mile race, because for 500 miles, we must go a little easier. And uh, the type of corners that there are at Bathurst are a little less severe than these ones here. But uh, still, we'll look long and hard. It could have been just a flaw in a wheel, not necessarily a design problem. More than likely, that's what it is. How important, Leo, is it for you to win Bathurst this year? Well, it's important for everybody because uh, the Australian motor industry is a pretty big marketplace and, and this is a, a showcase of what the motor industry has to offer. You saw a mini Bathurst here today, it was very interesting. And you could see how keen everyone was to win. Ford had won the week before at Melbourne Sandown Park, an impressive display of wet weather driving by number one works racer Alan Moffat had brought one of Al Turner's cars first home through the steady drizzle that left many smaller cars, including the Tiranas, floundering. Congratulations. A very fine drive. Thank you. And with it, with... Well, I hate to say it's not Coca-Cola to make that fabulous board go the way it did. I would like to express my uh, appreciation and thanks to the organisers of the Light Car Club who put on the meeting and in particular to the flag marshals who stood out there in the rain and obviously for three hours to make it a safe race for us. Alan Moffat is currently favoured for outright honours at Bathurst. But nagging doubts whether the big cars will last the 500 gruelling miles were fed by their mechanical troubles at Sandown. Also of the Ford Motor Company, the Ford Falcon GTHO. The Ford pits functioned like clockwork. They needed to. With cars making two fuel stops at Bathurst, every second is vital. A competitor can gain five miles while the petrol goes in. It was a mixed day for Al Turner. He won, the cars did surprisingly well in the wet, but too many had basic problems with engines and brakes. Alan Moffat takes the victory lap. His car, a far cry from the machines in the first 500 mile race in 1960, won by this Vauxhall. Its preparation, a few casual drives on the highway to make sure everything worked. A quick tune, a polish, point her up the track and let her go. The 1960 winner, John Roxburgh, now manages the Datsun Racing Team. He's unhappy with the way the race has developed. I'm firstly criti critical that it's become a race for an outright winner now. Uh, when we first won it, there was no outright winner's prize, no money. And uh, secondly, I'm very critical that the cars have developed away from what the general public drives. You think that the car that runs on Bathurst track is not really a standard car? No, I don't think it's freely available to the public. I think if you went to, to try and buy one of the big three special Bathurst specials at the moment, you couldn't buy one. What about the, the qualification that 200 must be sold? Well, that's just obviously ridiculous. The, to be a production touring car in any other country but Bathurst, you have to make 5,000 units. Um, Bathurst, you have to make 200. That's obviously patently ridiculous. You believe that the big three build special cars for Bathurst? Well, I mean, nowhere in the world do you buy a car with a 45-gallon fuel tank except in Australia, and that only happens to bob up about a month before Bathurst. Uh, nowhere in the world do, does anyone make 200 cars specially and sell them to the public unless it's someone like Rolls-Royce or Jensen or some extraordinary little sort of backyard manufacturer. But, uh, so they are specially built for Bathurst. Anyone that thinks otherwise is fiddling with the truth. I mean, I've heard people say that this is not right and they could easily sell the cars whether Bathurst was on or not. But unless Bathurst was on, they wouldn't build them. Al, have Fords built a special car to win Bathurst this year? Oh, not really. Everybody. There's been quite a bit of controversy about this, whether or not it's been a special car, but we consider it a normal progression in our what we term as a performance vehicle. John, have Valiant built a special car to win Bathurst? No, we haven't. The cars will be running at Bathurst. Uh, our track pack paces in either two or four barrel form. 
which we're using throughout the year in competition purposes. And the pack is specifically de designed for people who want to run a Valiant in other races. This, the car we're sitting in with its 36 gallon tank is not really a family car, is it? It's not a family car, it is a sporting saloon. What's its top speed? I don't know, um, to be quite honest. Um, I should imagine around 125 miles per hour. The firm has not published the brake horsepower of this car. Does this mean they're trying to play down just how powerful an automobile it is? They're not trying to play it down. They're not trying to overemphasize it in advertising. We don't feel that it's the most important feature of the vehicle and we want people to appreciate the pacer for what it is rather than for the claimed output of its engine. But when people see this car on the television set going around very quickly, isn't it really the speed that's selling it? It's the speed, the handling and the braking ability of the car. For the heavy braking and high speed cornering on the narrow mountain circuit, organisers this year have permitted racing tyres with their wider treads. The Fords and bigger Pacers gulp a gallon of petrol in six miles of racing. Their 36 gallon tanks give them the same range as the Tirana 17 gallon tank. The three makes refuel twice in the race. Gas extinguishers are fitted to Fords and Valiants because of their great fuel load. This switch can be activated by the driver or by an impact to pump Freon gas through jets inside cabin and boot, with roll bars now compulsory on all cars. Aircraft type safety harness for all drivers is credited with saving lives last year, when fans witnessed the most spectacular crash in the race's history. The leading car blew a tyre and rolled during the hectic first lap scramble with 60 cars fighting for position on the 28 foot wide road. 12 cars came to grief, but there were no injuries and no fire. Every part in a Bathurst engine is tested until perfect. While still brand new, it's taken to pieces and rebuilt to the maker's blueprint, eliminating any small variations that are usual in a production line engine. Its power output is measured on a dynamometer until it has maximum efficiency. Every hour means another part more perfect, less friction, more power, a fraction more speed to play with. These are the thoroughbreds. They carry the company and dealer flags. Does Bathurst Performance sell cars? Al Turner. Well, let's put it this way. A gentleman has to take pride in the vehicle that he owns. Nobody wants to own a vehicle that's a loser. Uh, we feel that, yes, it does have uh, a tendency to help us to sell vehicles. I think it, it has a tendency to create an overall image. You don't seem to want to commit yourself very strongly that there is a direct relation between a win at Bathurst and an increase in sales. Well, our statistics and surveys haven't been able to really definitely prove this. A number of times that we have won, uh, the sales have decreased right after Bathurst. So it depends on the environment of the market, but generally speaking, we believe that there is benefit in it. Does this seem strange to you that there's only an impalpable kind of benefit, something you can't really measure, from a, a tremendous expenditure of money and effort? Well, it's, it's a difficult thing to equate uh, directly to, to sales, and that's why I can't really give you a positive answer. But, uh, you know, it can be like advertising. If you don't advertise, you don't sell anything. Car dealers believe the best advertisement is a checkered flag with the winning make shining proudly in their showroom. Even used cars seem shinier from a Bathurst winning stable. Selling is the name of the automotive game. Any publicity attracting potential buyers makes a dealer bask in reflected glory from his works team, even though the bread and butter models at 20 miles an hour slower than their racing brothers. The Melbourne home of Ford. Even within the firm, few can estimate the company money involved in the challenge, directed from Al Turner's office in the research nerve centre. Motoring experts have suggested a design and production project involving a quarter of a million dollars. Al Turner. Well, they know more about that than I do then. Uh, I don't have any information about that at all. What would happen to you, say, that in the event that your cars didn't win the Bathurst? What would happen to me? Yes. Well, I'd probably come back to work on Monday and continue to do just exactly what I'm doing. 
Uh, you know, in order to, uh, to be, you know, anybody can be a winner. Uh, but to know how to lose and be a graceful loser sometimes is hard for some people to do. Uh, and when you enter into competition, you always face the possibility of losing. Uh, nothing is a sure thing. And we believe that, you know, we lay our reputation on the line at Ford when we openly enter motorsport. Some people don't choose to do this. Are you thinking of GMH, perhaps? Well, I'm not saying, but uh, I think it's quite evident we all know who enters into motorsport. We all know who are not involved. But uh, there is a great deal of money being spent by somebody to make other vehicles competitive. Can I pin you perhaps closely? Do you believe that the Holden dealer team is in fact an independent team? I don't have anything to prove that it is. Or I don't have anything to prove that it isn't. I am not employed by General Motors, but by the dealers. But some motoring writers have said that the Holden dealers team is just a back stairs way for Holdens to actually race cars. Well, they're entitled to their opinion. Uh, I run the team and I happen to know what does go on. And I am employed by the dealer council. What assistance do you get from the factory? Well, practically nothing. Uh, you, get technical, uh, you get technical help if there's something going wrong or if you want the blueprints or something like this, all these sort of things are available. Once again, I've still got to work for the dealer council all the time. I don't have to actually have anything to do with the factory. Chrysler puts its reputation on the line for its car's performance, with these paces getting their finishing touches in Sydney. Chrysler executives have been termed the quiet men from Adelaide but no one underestimates the intensity of their campaign. Manager, John Ellis. Well, our tactics will be to go as fast as we can and beat them where possible, but um, we will keep other cars in reserve um, at a set lap speed that they can be sure of finishing in a good position at the end of the race. What do you think would be Harry Firth's problems and Al Turner's problems at the moment? I think uh, Harry Firth's problems will be getting um, his cars ready in time. I believe they are a bit behind schedule. And I think in the race, that their brake endurance will be inferior to ours. And I think that our cars will be faster. Um, Al Turner is having a lot of trouble with brakes and also with engines. You're relatively young compared to Al Turner and Harry Firth. Do you feel this may be a disadvantage, your lack of competitive experience? I think the lack of experience is a disadvantage. I don't think being young is. I think um, I can look at things in a different light from their old established um, point of view. And I think this is a definite advantage. Harry Firth's garage in a Melbourne back street is burning late night electricity with only days to go. The team have prepared cars for many years and know the fine mechanical touches that can win or lose. Harry Firth, the old campaigner, appreciates the slimness of the margins. He won the race last year on a calculated risk that the leading Ford would have to stop for petrol in the last lap, while his Holden had enough juice to coast to the chequered flag. The margins may be as fine this year. Everything is pushed to the legal limit. In this anonymous, tightly guarded building separated from the Ford works, Al Turner's men are fighting their battle against time to solve crucial problems that are only known inside the wire. As front runner, Al's under most pressure with the pack hard behind him. One slip and they'll drive over him. Any time that I spend watching to see what my competitor is doing, it takes time away from my own job and then I'm not capable of doing the best that I can possibly do. What can you say about your tactics for Bathurst? I'll go as fast as we can for as long as we can and win if we can. I think that Fords have got problems with the car, the only cars that are definitely faster than ours. And I think that we've got a very good chance of winning. Sunday afternoon on the narrow mountain circuit at Bathurst, there won't be room for the big three, just the big one. And that's it for another week. Until next weekend, it's goodbye from Four Corners. Mm -hmm.